This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, 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 Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And boy, do we have some bad news for you. So you'd better pay attention. You'd better pay attention. Because this is what, you know, we're looking into, you know, after, you know, life is what BC before Corona and then AC after Corona. But in the middle of all this, we have an election coming up. And it's gonna be a battle, it's the nastiest, most crazy. I've never seen anything so hateful, spiteful, lying and all, all this stuff. But it comes down to what's in it for you and me. And so my little crystal ball says going BC, no, AC after Corona, and we're gonna have stagflation, which means there's no growth. You know, the, the magic word is always growth. And then there's gonna be taxation. Yay, higher taxes, no matter what. And then C, devaluation. In other words, your money will buy you less because they're gonna print more. So the question to all of you today is, what are you gonna do in you know, uh, AC after Corona? Stagflation, taxation, devaluation world. And our guest is always a special friend, a person who has made Kim and I millions by not, pay, not by illegally not paying taxes. And he's gonna give us his crystal ball readings on taxation because it affects stagflation and it affects devaluation. But more importantly, it's gonna affect what life is gonna be like you for AC after Corona. Any comments, Kim? Well, it's just a, it's a roller coaster <laughs> and it's a crazy <laughs> time. And uh, I just, I, I, I have no crystal ball, but I do know that uh, one side, definitely the Democrats definitely want to tax the heck out of everybody um, and not help the small business person at all. So I, I'm anxious to hear what Tom has to say. Cause I know Tom reads the tax code and reads these things to the nth degree. So we're going to get the little scoop on what is being proposed out there. And, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. When I was reading playboy, Tom was reading the tax code. That's the difference here. Right, Tom. So That's Tom, right. Stagflation, taxation, devaluation. How does taxation affect all of that? What's going to happen in AC after Corona? Well, taxation is how you pay for it, right? So you have a couple of things going on here. One, you've got to pay for the coronavirus and all those, uh, all the money that's being spent and the drop in the economy. But at the same time, you have this whole, um, this push towards reallocating income. So what you're going to do is you're going to really go after anybody with money um, the, the Biden campaign truly wants to tax, um, as much as 80%. Um, it, it would be the death of small business, frankly. Um, if Biden were to uh, succeed in what he wants to do, I think it would be the death of small business. You'd certainly never see a small business, uh, carry on, uh, from generation to generation. So what's the difference between a Biden and to be fair and balanced here? What do you think Trump would do if he was he gets, he remains reelected? Uh, I, I think I think he'd keep it the way it is. I I think he likes the uh, uh, corporate income tax rate low. It certainly has invited investment. I, I happen to agree with that one. It's very much invited investment. Um, he'll keep the bonus depreciation, which has certainly increased the um, price of real estate and kept real estate going up. Uh, he would keep the oil and gas tax benefits, which is basically the only thing that's kept anybody drilling has been the tax benefits for oil and gas because nobody would drill in such a tumultuous world where uh, who knows what the uh, price of oil is going to be tomorrow. It could, drop, it could drop by 50% or it could raise by, you know, 10%. Um, but uh, so all of those tax incentives would certainly stay under Trump. That's certainly, he's been very consistent with that. And Biden, Biden actually, his stated objective is to eliminate uh, tax incentives, which would put us into a, a really a giant um, uh, uh, roller coaster. Really, I mean, it'd, it'd, it'd have such a big impact on the economy that I think you'd see a major economic crash as a result of the tax law changes. 
So, so let me add something real quickly right here. The reason is Biden versus Trump. And the reason it, you know, why would Biden say I'm going to increase taxes is because a major part of their constituency are employees. And it doesn't affect them. All they see are the entrepreneurs and the real estate investors and all this. Well, they say, well, they're getting tax breaks and we don't. And that's why we wrote in Rich Dad Poor Dad, the cash flow quadrant, you have E, S's, B's, and I's. The B's and I's get the tax break, the big business and investor. Right. But the employee and the self-employed gets hammered. So it's actually, in my opinion, and Tom, would you agree with this? It's a political tactic to kind of piss off the millennials, the E's and S's, the disenfranchised, the people that they can't do anything about their taxes. I mean, there's nothing, there's, uh, you say it all the time, there's nothing you can do to help them, E's and S's. So by Trump's, by, by Biden saying, I'm gonna tax all the B's and I's, the entrepreneurs and investors, he gets votes. Would you say it's a big part of it? Oh, I don't think there's any question. Um, Biden's definitely gone a lot further left than, you know, his political career would say he would be. And uh, there's there's a lot of uh, emphasis on the, you know, on the Democrat side to um, reallocate income, to, you know, to push income from the wealthy to the poor. And, and, you know, it's understandable. And certain things will happen. I mean, we'll get higher, you know, we would get higher tax rates. I don't think we'd get all of the changes that Biden would want. I mean, um, uh, frankly, Obama had a lot of those same changes in his budget every single year, and they never happened. So I don't think that all of it's going to happen, but some of it will. We will get higher tax rates for sure. Okay, so, so Tom, I have a question about if Biden got his way and he got this 80% taxes, then the whole thing about employer employees isn't going to really matter because they're going to lose their jobs anyway. If the businesses can't sustain and haven't they already kind of had that experience with COVID and they thought they had a safe, secure job and now they're out of work. So well, be brought to the forefront. Well, yeah, that's, that's certainly part of it. Um, part of it also though, is that, you know, it's still a tax on net income and businesses tend to reinvest their money in their business. And so they have, they tend to lower, they're able to lower their net income where an employee cannot lower their net income. So the taxes actually get raised more on employees by definition than they ever are on business owners. Yes, and thank you. And, and that's really, the, it's, it's political at this point. So when Biden, and we're not Republican or Democrat, when we do our, we, we, we lean more towards Republican or more actually investor. But when, when they say we're gonna raise taxes, it's the investor and the entrepreneur goes, holy mackerel but it's the employee and the self-employee say, oh, good, good, tax the bastards. And really that's what we understand to be fair about this whole thing. And the reason Tom's on board here, again, I said, we're, we're coming into a tough environment financially, economically, stagflation, taxation, and devaluation because the economy is such a mess. So Tom, take it from there. You know, it's, we're not Republican or Democrat, we do our best po possible, but when, when, Biden says we're going to raise taxes. It upsets certain people. It gets other people excited. Well, right? for sure, sure. Because see, Biden is uh, is taking this bandwagon approach that anytime anytime you have a uh, an incentive in the tax law, it's necessarily bad. Where in the reality is, is the incentives are there to do what the government wants done. And so, you know, can the government really do something better than the, than the public, than the private sector can do it? And that's really the issue. And what, what Biden wants is he wants, you know, he's really trying to divide. He's trying to say, look, you know, if, if you, you know, if, if you want higher taxes on the rich, you should vote for me. If you want more money allocated to the poor and the middle class, you should vote for me. And that's certainly his political ploy here. Um, the, the question is whether he, he, you know, you can absolutely actually get that done because you would upset the economy so much by doing it. Um, it's one thing to raise tax rates, but to uh, eliminate incentives. And here's what happens. Now, when you raise tax rates, you actually make incentives more valuable. So you actually give people more of an encouragement to take advantage of the incentives when you raise the rates. 
So it's, it's, it's really an interesting dynamic because you've got the economy, you've got inflation, which increases your natural tax brackets. And, and, and you've got this whole controversy between, you know, the 1% and the 99%. I think it's fascinating. Well, so we'll go back because T Thomas book is tax-free wealth. It's eye-opening book. If you really want to understand the game of money or the rich, you got to read tax-free wealth. What Tom is saying here about incentives is the reason Tim and I get huge breaks for real estate is if we as investors, I quadrant did not invest, the government would have to pay would pay for it, right? Right, Tom, is that what you're saying? No, that's right. You know, the government would have to build housing if the private sector didn't build housing. And we've all seen what government housing looks like and it's not nearly as nice as the private sector housing. So that's typically the way the US has worked. I mean, the US is very based, very much based on private ownership of property which is very different from a lot of countries. And that private ownership has produced what we've produced. And you know, what Biden wants to do is really make us more like other countries that don't have that private ownership uh, mantra in their constitution. And the other thing you mentioned oil is that one of the reasons America had to become energy independent was the tax break. It wasn't that oil was making sense, right? We got huge tax breaks for drawing for oil, right? Well, that's for sure. And, and again, I mean, we're one of the few countries where, um, you know, individuals actually own the natural resources. And so there have to be incentives to develop those natural resources. Otherwise, individuals wouldn't take that kind of risk. And the government's really just sharing the risk of the investor and the entrepreneur. So if they raise taxes and they eliminate the incentives, let's say oil incentives, then what, the government now has to go into the business of Really well, that's, that's the problem, is that you, you would really lose um, private investment into some of these uh, risky ventures. I, I think it would decrease the incentive. I mean, people always have incentive because they have a profit motive. But if you raise tax rates along with reducing the incentives, that's kind of a double hit to um, the investment in that area. So basically, of course, Biden doesn't like drilling in oil anyway, just like uh, Obama didn't like drilling, drilling for oil. So if you don't like oil, it's a good thing to eliminate that incentive. And, and so it's consistent with their policy. And that would put us dependent on other countries for oil. Well, for sure. As long as oil is important, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be dependent on other countries if we're not drilling ourselves. So what, you know, your crystal ball again was, I said the stagflation ahead after Corona, taxation and devalue devaluation the way I handle it is very simple. They're going to print more money. They have to, to pay for all this crap going on. So the way you handle devaluation is gold, silver, and Bitcoin. So you want to come off of the central bank system. So that's why you look at gold and silver. Silver is up 6% this morning. Holy mackerel. And it's still got another 20% to go yet. But anyway, so that's why it's because they're gonna keep printing money. So the way you handle devaluation is you buy gold, silver, Bitcoin, something outside the central bank or the treasury system and Wall Street system. And then you have stagflation. The best way to beat stagflation is be an entrepreneur. Do you know, if, if your company cannot grow, then grow yourself. So Rich Dad was really designed for this time here. But we're talking to Tom Wheel right now about taxation. And as a real estate investor, the biggest incentive I have, there's several in real estate, one is depreciation and the 1031. So for those outside the country, you know, please hear me, but you have, you, got, you have to find a guy like Tom inside your country, okay? So Tom, we're gonna, we're gonna come back. Well, I'm gonna talk to you about what you, what can a person do in the after COVID environment, because we're heading into stagnate, stagflation, taxation, and devaluation. We'll be right back. And welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. And please leave a comment. Also, all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because we're an education company. We're not selling anything except education. But one of the best ways to learn is via repetition. 
So if you watch this program again, you'll get smarter. But if you have friends, family, and business associates, this is a very important program because we're talking about, you know, those AC, which is after Corona, and there was BC. And, and on, in the middle of all this AC, BC, be, before Corona, we have this crazy election. It is a nuts, most nuts, hateful, spiteful thing I've ever come across. That's so much hate and lies and incrimination. I don't know what to believe anymore. But you can believe the tax law. And so we're going to be talking about stagflation. How do you handle that? Taxation and devaluation. I already said the way you handle devaluation is printing money is gold, silver, and Bitcoin. So any comments, Kim, before we t toss it to uh, Tom? No, I just, I just, it really is a roller coaster. And it is, it's so hard to figure out the fake truth from the real truth and fake news from real news. It's like, it's, it's driving me nuts. Um, but so I, it is good to get to facts when we can find out what the facts are because everybody today is operating on opinion and they think their opinion is fact. So I just want to get to the truth facts of the thing. And we can always count on Tom Wheelwright, who's our rich dad advisor on taxes and, uh, name of your company is wealth ability. Um, and also the author of tax free wealth, how to build massive wealth by permanently lowering your taxes. So Tom, uh, we were talking at the break just a little bit, and I was asking, you know, Biden's come out with his tax plan. Is Trump's, has he, has Trump put forth any new tax plan or is he basically stay the course as we have it now? You know, Trump's very much stayed the course. Trump's a very much a, you know, private ownership and private investment type of a guy. I mean, that's who he is, right? So he's gonna continue to promote um, energy He's going to continue to, uh, through through tax benefits. He's going to continue to promote real estate investment through tax benefits, and he's going to continue to promote entrepreneurship through tax benefits, and particularly lower corporate tax rates as well as lower business tax rates. Where where Biden, you know, wants to raise all those rates. You know, one of the things that's fascinating to me is that, you know, like like Robert was, you were saying that you know Biden is very much his his constituency or employees right? They're pretty much all employees. And they're the ones who can't do anything about their taxes. And so when he raises rates, they're stuck. I mean, they're just stuck. Whereas business owners and investors, there's, there's always going to be opportunities to reduce your taxes. And as you raise rates, you ask you raise the incentive to reduce your taxes. And so, you know, when you have devaluation, for example, you by definition are raising rates, right? Because your, your uh, tax brackets are going up, your marginal tax rate is going up. So if you have a higher salary just because of, of devaluation, that pushes a salary higher, you're gonna have a higher tax rate, but you can't do anything about it. The entrepreneurs, they're the ones, the entrepreneurs and investors who can actually do something about this. And it doesn't matter what country you're in. I mean, all countries function the same way, right? It's always a net income tax. So investors and business owners in every country are always going to be able to reduce their taxes where the employees kind of get stuck. So what has, it's a political call, tax the rich. But the only people that get happy about that are poor people and entrepreneurs. I mean, uh, employees, but that's what, that's what Tom's book, tax free wealth. You want to, cause it's Tom's book is true throughout the world. He goes, well, it's different here in Canada or different here in Nigeria. It's always the same. So if you're an employee or you're a poor person, you get very happy about taxing the rich because you got screwed anyway. Right, Tom? Well, yeah, it, it's ironic, too, because uh, you're the one who has no control over your taxes. And so, um, you know, if, if you tax the rich and you make more money, you, you're the one who ends up paying the higher taxes. You know, historically, you know, I, I, I take I'm con continually learning this. Right. And I'm continually watching it. And, uh, you know, historically, the rich have always found a way. I mean, they're always going to find because they have team members. They have people who watch the tax law like I do. They have people who are constantly looking at it and constantly coming up with new ways um, that are legal to reduce your taxes. Employees don't have that option, and so they it's it's a little it's a little uh, ironic that 
they want the higher taxes on the rich, but if they get rich, they're the ones who pay the higher taxes. They pay it anyway. So that's the whole point here. So tax the rich is a political ploy. And if you understand that, if it makes you happy, I'm going to say it very simply, you're a loser. Because not that you're a loser, it's that you can't do anything about it. And the reason we have the Rich Dad Radio Program, again, with stagflation, taxation, and devaluation, as an entrepreneur and an investor, I want to be proactive, not just sit there and get screwed. So, Tom, what can an entrepreneur start doing about taxes? Well, the first, you know, as you always say, and I, I love this from you, Robert, is that uh, business is a team sport. And so the very first thing you have to do is you have to upgrade your team uh, because like Kim, you were saying, you want some, you, you want to know the facts. And if your, if your tax advisor, for example, is relying on the opinion of others, they're not going to get the facts. They're going to get the opinion of somebody else. And it might be the opinion of somebody who hasn't looked at the tax law for 20 years. And so they're looking up at stuff that's 20 years old. Whereas if, you, if you've got somebody on your team that's constantly looking at the tax law and what's coming up, see, here's what happens. Um, the the uh, Congress actually keeps a list of 100 items that raise and lower taxes. So these are different tax incentives, different ways to raise and lower taxes. So that when a bill comes out like the 2017 tax law, that's not invented from scratch. I mean, that's from a list of items that they had already been looking at. Well, the same thing is true, you know, as if, if, for example, were Biden to be elected, then he'd be looking at some of those same things. He's looking at what are these things on this list that I can, that I can get rid of or what can I do? And then he's going to have other people on the other side who are going to fight him. So, you know, it's a balancing act. And right now, you're right, Robert, it's a political act, right? It becomes a balancing act after they're elected. But right now, it's just a political act. How do you know if your CPA, your accountant, how do you know if they're up to the latest with the with happening in the tax laws? You know? Well, yeah, you know, I think the first thing is, you know, like any good entrepreneur, you kind of got a gut feeling for that. And if you have a question in your gut, then you probably should be questioning it. But second of all is, you know, just find out when, when was the last time they actually read the law? You know, when you have a new bill comes out, for example, as, you know, as we get in the, our next stimulus package uh, for the, the coronavirus, the during coronavirus, uh, D.C., Right. When we get the next stimulus package, ask, you know, ask your accountant. So, so what does that stimulus package say? What did you read in the actual b the bill itself? Not what did you hear about it or not what did you learn about it, but what did you read? I mean, you want people who actually read the law because that's the only way to get the facts is to read the actual law. And let me give you a, let me give you a book a plug. The main reason I asked and Kim and I asked you to write that book, it's self-defense. <laughs> No. The tax code for E's, S's, B's, and I's are functionally the same throughout the world, except when Tom and I teach, because somebody else, you can't do that here. You know what I mean? Because you got an idiot in front of you. Or a lot of times there are accountants who are idiots. But if you read Tom's book, I don't care if you live in Timbuktu, you'll be better educated so you can ask a better educated question. And if you ask a better educated question, you know if the person in front of you knows what they're talking about. And so that's why Tom's book, Tax-Free Wealth, is self-defense. It gives you a, a, a chance because there are so, I mean, how many thousands of tax pages are there? Oh, it's over, it's over 6,000 just in the U.S. In, in the U.K., it's twice that. It's 12,000. So how, how, many pages, how, many, how many pages in your book, Tom? Uh, my page, 280. <laughs> Good. I mean, read Tom's book and then you can skip the rest of it. But I'm, I'm trying to say to you, there's, you know, there's BC before Corona and AC, but also we have is the election coming up and whatever, whoever wins that, I mean, the reason AC is our cities are going broke. No taxes. When you shut businesses down, the cities are going broke. I mean, tax collections are so down. On top of that, you have everything collapsing. So who's going to pay for it? You and me. And that's why Tom's book is cheap. 
because you gotta, you've got to get ready to fight back. And uh, really, I think if that's a core message is you have the power, just read this 200-page book, Tax-Free Wealth, because they're coming after us. Right, Tom? Oh, I don't think there's any question. We're, we're at historically low tax rates. And, it, you know, no matter what happens, I mean, we're not going to ever see these kind of tax rates, just like we have historically low interest rates. We're never going to see a period like this um, for the rest of our lives. Uh, the tax rates will, will go up. I mean, eventually they'll go up whether Biden's elected or not. And they're going to go up in every country, like you say. I mean, somebody's got to pay for all of these um, expenses and the lack of tax revenues because you shut down. I mean, the biggest hit on the economy is not, you know, the, the, all the expenses of the virus. It's really the lack of tax revenues because you shut the economy down. That's it. And they're going to come after us. And, and that's why, you know, if you have a friend, you know, I always say you, you got to watch out your friends, business associates around you. If they're excited about taxing the rich, I would run because you have an idiot as a friend or a business associate because they don't know anything because they're poor in education. So be very careful because this tax to rich, my prediction is, is a mantra that's going to grow. I, I agree. And, and in fact, I think we, I, I think, we, I think we will see higher tax rates. I think we'll see more tax rates. Uh, I certainly think the corporate tax rate will go up and, you know, at modest levels, I don't think it's going to would hurt the economy at all, frankly. Um, I think there are some tax rates that could go up. Um, but but it's the tax incentives. What, what concerns me more is the disruption in the economy when you make major changes to the tax incentives, because now you change the way people behave on a day to day basis. And, you know, Robert, you're always good at asking me questions because you, you never ask me the question, is this deductible, is this deductible? You always ask me the right question. I say, how do I make this deductible? You know, <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. You're always asking, how do I do it? Right? And, and that's the right question. And that's the question that, that you should be asking your accountant, your tax advisor, doesn't matter what country you're in, is, you're in, is how do I lower my taxes? How do I do this? It's not a matter of can I do it? It's just how do I do it? And, and all that's going to happen with, uh, you know, if we had a, a change in administration or a change in Congress or a change in the Senate is how that is done. It's not going to be a question of whether you can reduce your taxes. It's just going to be how you can reduce your taxes. And, yeah. you know, yeah, historically, too, when you talk about, you know, tax the rich, everybody's getting on this bandwagon of tax the rich. Well, the people who want to tax the rich, are, a lot of them are the people that don't make money and are dependent on the government. And isn't it true? It is, I mean, I know it's true. Historically, I mean, it happened in Germany when they were in a economic turmoil, the people that came to power said, don't worry, I'll take care of you. The government will take sure. care of you. And when we have more and more people depending on the government for their livelihood, they're all gonna vote for that. Right, of course. I mean, people will always vote for somebody who's going to give them money. I mean, yeah. that's that's true for sure. And and th th there's no question that business owners, investors, we did the same thing, right? We we also vote for those who are going to, you know, take our side of things. Um, but what's important to see is is to understand the impact when you make massive change, right? That's what's important. You know, you make minor change and you you don't have an issue. You want to. You want to add a tax on people who make over a million dollars, people make over $5 million. You want to add another tax rate there. I don't think that's going to have any impact on the economy. But you start taking away incentives like um, the 1031 exchange rules or the depreciation rules or the oil and gas rules. You start taking some of those incentives away, then people just stop doing them. And do you really want that change in behavior? If you do, then that's how you should vote. So if you look at this here, this is the cash flow quadrant book number two. You have ESBNI. These guys here, they get all excited when you say tax to rich because they're screwed anyway, but they're going to pay the taxes. These guys here, the big businesses and the investor is going to do all the evading, right? Not, no, not avoidance, evasion. They're going to do tax planning ahead of time. <laughs> Evading. <laughs> Not evading. What's it called? Avoidance. That that that's right. Doing straight avoidance and evasion is about twenty years. 
<laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I think you can just take one thing away from this show right now. If you ask your friend, what do you think about taxing the rich? Then you'll know if you should spend any more time with them or not. Because <laughs> you know who you're talking to. You're talking to an idiot who likes paying taxes because they're going to get screwed anyway. Well, it's, it's very tough for employees and uh, self-employed. Easier for self-employed, but really tough for the, for the employees to do anything about their taxes. Um, yeah, they're going to get some tax benefits. I mean, under uh, Biden's plan, for example, they would get some tax benefits and they wouldn't have to do anything for them, but they're not going to have any control. See, the difference is on the B and the I side, you have control over how much tax you pay. You have control over whether you do those things the government wants you to do. On the left side, the E and the S side, you really lack much control of your tax situation or frankly, even your financial situation. So even if you started a small part-time business today, you could get some tax benefits, yes? You know, the great thing about the tax law around the world is it doesn't matter how big you are. The tax law applies equally to all business owners. So as long as you get good advice, um, you can have a, 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 a business from your home. You can have an e-business. You can do things, you know, that's really simple out of your house. And you get big tax benefits that if you were an employee, you wouldn't get. I mean, take a simple home office, right? Employees don't get to deduct their home office. They all have a home office right now, and the employees don't get to deduct it. But if you started a small business out of your home, you'd be able to deduct your home office. So the, Tom's book is called Tax-Free Wealth, 200 pages, probably 20 bucks US. It could be the best investment you make for the rest of your life and future. It's not that you become an accountant. I'll ask better questions. And I, and I really want to encourage you. I know so many people that get sexually stimulated, most of my relatives, when they say, oh, we're going to tax the rich because they're ignorant. They're really, really financially ignorant people. And what happens is they get taxed because the B and the I side will do as everything they can, they'll have a guy like Tom on their team. And because taxes are your single largest expense. And my crystal ball says it's about to go up because governments are broke. Right, Tom? No, there's no question. And, you know, you make it a good point that the, the state and the local governments, you know, they don't get to print money the way the federal government gets to do. So, you know, it won't just be income taxes that you're going to see increase. You're going to see property taxes increase, sales taxes increase. I mean, all sorts of taxes are going to increase because how else are they going to pay for all of these expenditures and this lack of tax revenue that they've had over the last several months? And who's going to pay for all that PPP and CARES Act? That they're going to they're printed trillions, and they're going to print trillions and more. Actually, before this is over, they're going to print uh, several trillion more. And uh, and and you're right that you know that results in devaluation, right? That's what that's what happens when you print money is you end up with devaluation, which by its nature ends up with higher tax rates. So we just well, kind of plan on taxes going up. So let me read you the three things my crystal ball says. Stagflation, that means growth stops. So the way you would get out of that is you become an entrepreneur and then you get tax breaks for being an entrepreneur, but you gotta read Tom's book. And then you have taxation. Well, if you become an entrepreneur, you have a better chance. And then devaluation, they're gonna have to print trillions. That means the value of your dollar is gonna go down. So if you're saving dollar, yen, pesos, euro, you're screwed. So the way out of the devaluation is gold, silver, Bitcoin. You know, those things you can do, or you can be the toad on the stool and say, yeah, tax the rich. I'm gonna vote for that guy because he's gonna tax the rich. Well, you're the guy that's gonna get screwed. That's why Tom's book, Tax-Free Wealth, 200 pages. And if you don't like to read, Get it an audio book, get, it, get something, get somebody who likes to read. But you have got to get smarter. Otherwise, you're gonna get screwed. Kim, any other words? <laughs> well, I think Tom summed it up very, very well. No matter what happens, no matter which way this goes, the entrepreneur will always figure out a way 
to make it in the best of their best of their benefit and they'll so, figure it out because that's so let me so let me say this if if there's stagflation the entrepreneur will figure out a way to make more money right an employee has to wait for a raise and then if there's devaluation they're going to say i'll just save more money loser 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 don't you realize they're printing more money not only that look at your interest rate at this in the savings accounts 0 0.03 percent um, crazy and if they ever raised interest rates this whole economy would come down because i was just reading i was reading uh ron paul who was a, who was a congressman he asked for an audit of the fed so he got an audit of the Fed, I think, in 2010, the Federal Reserve Bank. And what the Fed did that they'd never reported because they were a criminal organization, they loaned, lent out $200 trillion to banks all over the world and hedge funds all over the world. And that's only a partial audit by the government. In other words, they're lying to us. So we don't know how much money the Fed has printed and how much more they're going to print. So that's why the Rich Dad Radio Show and our books and our games and all this is more geared for the person who wants to be an entrepreneur and an investor and a proactive learner. Or you can be an effing idiot and just sit there, tax to rich, yeah, tax to rich. Or you're the one that's gonna get taxed. So final words there, Kim. Well, I think we've made a really good case to even if you're not an entrepreneur today, you could start a little part-time e-business and even that will benefit you better than just hoping and praying that you're going to get a new job. A lot of people are out of work right now, get a new job or get a raise. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of raises being given in the near future, uh, given what's happened with the economy. So I, I, again, it, you know, it just goes back to what we talk about, what the Rich Dad Company is about, is about taking your, making, getting your financial things in your financial house in your own hands, getting in control of your own finances. That's what we're about, financial responsibility. So that, again, this, this show just uh, reiterates that even more strongly. Kim, are we always talking about making more money? That's what we were talking about yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about tomorrow. Same thing. <laughs> Reduce our taxes. <laughs> and paying less taxes, of course, too. Final word, Tom. You know, I think we've all learned our lesson over the last few months is depending on the government, it's probably a bad idea. <laughs> and maybe we ought to take, like Kim, like you say, let's take control of our life. I mean, when you take control of your life from a financial standpoint as a business owner investor, you also can take control of your tax life. And so you can actually make more money, have more assets and pay less tax as an entrepreneur investor Whereas if you're, the, if you're making the same amount of money, you're going to pay a lot more tax as a, as a small business owner or as an employee. So in final words on this whole thing is we archive our programs. Go to richdadradio.com. You know, listen to this program again and maybe it'll sink in. But more importantly this, if you have friends, family members, and business associates and you ask them, you say, do you think we should tax the rich? If they say yes, either have them listen to this program or back away slowly. Back away slowly. So with that, I want to thank Tom Wheelwright. Again, it's W-H-E-E-L-W-R-I-G. The tax laws are the same all over the world, basically. It's written for the entrepreneur and the investor, and it punishes employees and small business guys. That's, tr that's a fact throughout the world. So it's up to you to get the education that they'll never give you in school. So it's Tom Wheelwright's book, Tax Free Well. If you really want to find out why the rich are getting richer, there is no better book except Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Right, Kim? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, with, so with that, thank you guys. Thank you everybody listening to the Rich thank Dad you. Radio Show. It was fun. And remember the question is, what do you think about taxing the rich? The answer from that friend or business associate will tell you a lot about who you're talking to. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.